you've talked about the fact that there has been a press blackout on this oh. book. Uh, now, obviously, I hear people, you know, I watch shows pretty regularly where people are constantly saying Bush should be impeached, uh, that Bush uh, should be guilty of war crimes. Uh, it would seem to me that the people that are doing those shows on television and radio um, should be having you on uh, to talk about the book, and yet okay, okay. you're telling me that's not happening. War crimes can't happen, okay? Right. No jurisdiction. Impeachment's not going to happen, okay? Right. So we're just talking about words. This thing right here is a real thing right here, okay? You're aware of that? Yeah. That he could end up in an American court and Absolutely. being prosecuted for first-degree murder. Uh, but let me tell you the story behind this. I've never had difficulty getting a book published. I've had three books got the number one in the New York Times, true crime books. I've had many New York Times bestsellers. The thought never entered my mind that I was going to have any trouble getting a book published. This book here had an extremely difficult time getting it published. I went back east, met with several publishers. The fear was palpable. They were um, sympathetic with what I was saying. They recognized the marketability of the book, obviously, but they say things to me like, Mr. Bugliosi, are you sure you want to publish this book? One of them put it in black and white, too hot to handle. I finally found a publisher. Okay. Now we go down to the audio level. Never gave it a thought before. Uh, reclaiming history, Simon and Schuster. This time, my agent calls me. Says Vince, I cannot get an audio company in America to do the audio on this book. We had to get the BBC. They did the audio. Right now, as I'm talking to you, there's in production a documentary based on the book for the big screen. The producers couldn't raise one penny in America. The money came in from Canada. With every other book. Uh, if the pub date, let's say, was on a Wednesday, I'd say, when, when am I flying in to New York City? Mm -hmm. Tuesday evening, Monday, it was an automatic. Not, am I going to go to New York City? But you automatically go there. You start in on the morning shows, you do national television, you travel around the country. I didn't go to New York City in this book. Complete, total blackout. To the point, to the point that one major network radio wouldn't even accept money for a radio advertisement. Now, now here's the interesting story, and it's all fair. The left wing is terrorized of the right wing. Yeah. The right wing doesn't fear the left wing. So the left wing doesn't want to talk to me about this case because they're fearful that the right wing is going to savage them. The right wing doesn't want me on to talk about their guy, mm -hmm. Bush, being on trial for murder and may get the death penalty. So there's a complete blackout. But here's the interesting thing that you probably don't know. The heart of the establishment, the pinnacle of the establishment, is stepping in, and that's the New York Times. Monday, they've already interviewed me. They're going to do a big, big story on the fact that this book, you know, this is the land of the free, the home of the brave, yeah. we cherish freedom of speech and expression, that this book is being completely blacked out by the national media. They're absolutely terrorized to talk about Bush being prosecuted for first degree murder or any other degree of homicide. But they're doing a big story on it on Monday. And they're at the pinnacle of the establishment. So I'm, I'm proud of them that they're doing that. Now, they're not talking about the merits of the book or what have you. But one reason I'm not on is because I write serious books. Not only have I had three books that got up the number one in the New York Times, but just a couple months ago, for a record-breaking third time, I, run, I won the Edgar Allan Poe Award for Best True Crime Book of the Year for Reclaiming History. That is perceived to be far and wide the book on the case, a book for the right. ages, the definitive book. Tom Hanks and his people are doing a 10-hour miniseries on it for HBO. So I write serious books. And someone said to me, Vince, you know, let me tell you something. And I heard this from two other people. But just Wednesday night I heard it. If some nut wrote a book with this title, The Prosecution of George W. Bush for Murder, they'd probably put him on because it's colorful, okay? But when you put me on, I write serious books. And uh, words, that's meaningless. This is real here. This guy could end up being prosecuted for murder, and everyone is terrified of talking about it. Are they also terrified because of the precedent? The, I know, is it, do people say, well, it could have a chilling effect on Some people any that. president that wants to go to war in the future? Yeah, but why would a president who is well-intentioned and not lying to the American people, why would he fear being prosecuted? Who's going to bring a prosecution against him if there's no evidence? The only president in the future right. it would deter is someone who had the same thought 
is this guy right here taking this nation to war under false pretenses. And that type of president, yes, we do want to deter him. But what other president would have any fear? If you're going to make that argument, then I guess we should uh, uh, repeal the impeachment clause of the U.S. Constitution. Because if you impeach someone, then everyone's going to be afraid to act in the future because they're going to be impeached. It's nonsense. The only people it's going to deter is some grotesque anomaly, an aberration like George Bush. And if that guy comes along, yeah, we do want to deter him. <laughs>